In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of creating a class communication. As you begin to think about class communications, think about what it is that the students need to know, think about when they need to know it, and the importance of that information. All of those things that you have in the back of your mind as things to think about will certainly guide you into how you create the class communication and the information that's included. So let's start by actually dragging it into the course. So when we think about where does it need to be and what do they need to know, I might be thinking about my location. Is it something that they need to read before they read anything else in the course? Should they be thinking about it uh, and reading it as they're beginning their action items and the readings for the week? So let's say I want to have it near the beginning of week one. So I'm going to take my class communication. So what I'm going to do is put my mouse over top of the eye and wait to get the four-headed arrow. That is my quickest indication that I have my mouse in the right place and I'll be able to drag it into the course. Then I will left click, hold, and begin to drag that object. As I drag it, you can see there's these little drop zones that appear. I'm going to put it right there. After it's been placed, um, the course actually saves at that point, so you don't have to do anything special to make sure that it's saved. Its location is now set. The next thing that you should do is give it a name. I'm going to call this week one, and we'll call it announcement. You hit the enter button on your keyboard. That will save it again, and now that, that has been saved. To open the object, I'll do something very similar to what I did before, which is make sure that my mouse is over the top in the four-headed arrow, and I'll click once, and that will open the object. Now at this point, I can begin the process of setting dates, uh, putting information in, and thinking about what I want students to know. Many instructors write these ahead of time and put them in Word. In that case, you can copy and paste, and we'll take a look at that as well. So at this point, I'm going to say, I'm probably going to do content first. So to do content, I'm going to scroll down here, and then I'm going to click on the plus sign, this uh, click to add content button, which will open up my editor. Now this editor has a lot of options. So as you can see, you're really not limited on the type of content that you can embed, the kind of content that you can write, uh, and even format it the way it needs to be formatted. So you have many options. We're going to cover the basics, but if, you know, if you're more advanced in that, you'll be able to figure many of those out on your own. And then later on in the course, you'll be able to see some more advanced options. So you'll have lots of opportunities to try some new things and to do some, um, you know, maybe even expand your abilities to do those things as well. So let's just put some simple content here. So here's the content of my announcement. So just some quick text. Let's say I needed to do a bulleted list. I can click on the bullet list and write that in too. In addition to that, I can also use bold, italics, underlining, adding links, embedding pictures. I can also use some um, the virus editor to, to put some math equations in there, uh, even embed flash. And if you're really advanced, you can do some iframe work and click on the iframe to embed content. So it's a great place to start with that content. In addition, if you have content in Word, you can copy it from Word and paste it right here to embed it into the, um, into the student content section. Now before I leave the student content section, there's a little tip for you. Anytime you see something labeled student content, it means that students can see it. And that also extends to the learning objects and the announcements. So that's consistent between those two things. So if you think about it, student content's always visible by students, instructor content is always visible by instructors. And that's pretty much the case all the time unless the entire object is hidden, in which case that's a special case. So we've now entered our content into the student content section. Then I'm going to click Done. When I'm done with that, I might also want to make some other decisions here too. That's just content, so this is a simple approach. But what if I wanted students to get additional information? I can also add a discussion. 
to turn on a discussion, simply click the off button and that will activate the discussion. From here you have a choice. You can either enter the topic as in, you know, starting in the top of the actual discussion as well as a description of it, or you can simply just turn the tool on. By turning it on, you can add that information later. That's what I prefer when I do it, so I'm going to leave it that way and close this. So now we have to go back later and put in the topic, but that gives me some flexibility later to actually add that information. In addition to that, you can also add an additional place for students to turn things into you. If you wanted to add an extra Dropbox location, simply turn on Submit and it will add that Dropbox. What I think is this is a great way to use it is if students need to give you a draft. If you want them to give you a draft and have you give them feedback, it's a great way to do that. Uh, some instructors I've worked with also use it for, um, for teamwork so that students can turn their teamwork in all at once and then um, get feedback on that and then they can use the assignment to actually turn in the final. So there's a couple of ways uh, that that can be useful. In addition, you can also turn on Meet. All this does is create a link to the online meeting tool. If you change your mind, simply click it again to turn it off. In addition, you can attach files. So maybe after you do a lecture, you want to prepare the uh, PowerPoint slides to share with your students. Simply attach those PowerPoint slides by clicking the Attach File button. You can go and search for that file. Click on it and then click Open. And that file will then be attached here. If you change your mind, just click Remove. So again, it's a great way of getting lots of different information to your students and to supplement that course content uh, with those extra added value items. So finally, when we're looking at how we want students to see this, at the moment, this is an unpublished object, as in everything we've done students can't see. We are simply just working on it right now. But when I am ready, I want to publish this to the class. So to go through that publishing process, I'm going to click on Publish to Class, or if I really don't want to do it yet, I can simply save the draft. Saving a draft is nice because it just means you can come back later and you won't lose, your, lose the work that you've just done. But instead, we are going to publish to class. So I'm going to click Publish to Class, and it automatically defaults to today's date. So because of today's date, if I did nothing else and just clicked Publish, it would be done and students would be able to see it. So we're going to do that process and then in a later video I'll show you a different workflow. I'm going to click Publish and then go back to the course and you can now see that it is published. It's, you know, it is no longer transparent, it's no longer hidden from students and it's been published. So now students can see that as soon as they log in and get into the course.